Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, a couple of days ago, another YouTube user under the name Shujin Triple uh, created a video request regarding a couple of a uh, couple of things around the Oberth effect. Specifically, he asked. Uh, can you get a significant effect by being careful and making multiple burns so that you're only burning near periaps? And uh, secondly, he asked, uh, what's the best way to go about during gravity ass doing gravity assists to uh, escape into interplanetary space and perform those all-important transfer maneuvers? So uh, let's deal with the first one. And if, as you can see, this is exactly what I'm doing, is I'm making multiple small burns at perikey to uh, raise my apokey. And the idea being that by only burning near perikey, I'm maintaining control over the altitude and velocity. Now, if you do a single continuous burn, and especially if you have something that is low thrust, then as you burn, you're going to fly outwards very slowly and you're going to lose a little bit of the advantage that the Oberth effect gives you. Now, the question is, how big an advantage? Well, um, this took a really long time because I'm basically burning 20 seconds uh, either side of perihe, uh, perihe, and I'm using a spacecraft which has a large fuel tank, a large capsule, and a single nuclear engine, which means that it takes a really long time to accelerate anywhere. That means that I maximize the effect of uh, this particular issue. If you have something that burns very, very quickly, then there is very little advantage to this, um, this effect. You're much better off just making the single burn and not worrying about it. But in real life, um, yeah, here we are. So yeah, after that, we raised the Apple key to 55,000 and we took 547 fuel units to do it. So from there, we go r around one more time and we complete our injection into EVE uh, intersecting orbit. Now, obviously, I haven't bothered doing the phase angles right here. I'm basically lowering my periaps down to 9.6 million kilometers. And for that, you see, doing a bit of math, you see that we need 611.5. So now, let us go back and do that same injection, but using a single burn, right? We're not going to take advantage of burning only close to perikey. So here we go, firing this up and just uh, takes a very long time. And, you know, <laughs> it seems to take forever. Sitting here, just watching it go while I'm actually doing other things at the same time, obviously. It's not like I sit and play just Kerbal Space Program anymore. Yeah, here we go, getting it key up so what we want to do is bring it up to 55,000 55,000 kilometers or 55 million meters and just using mechanical jab here to read out the values and there we go that's about as close as we need and so we see 2365 that means that we saved 14.3 fuel units that's less than one tenth of a ton it may be significant but another thing to remember is that uh this uh, engine at full power takes about 1.5 fuel units per second. So, you know, we're getting about nine seconds of extra thrust out of it. Again, we continue through and uh, burn all the way to bring our periaps down to 9.6 million. And what's the prize number? Well, just let me get the numbers here. And... There we go, we saved 40.5. So that's actually a not inconsiderable uh, saving, but for all the effort, honestly, it's not a lot of fuel. Now, the Mooner Gravity Assist, does this really help? So I've set this up, we had to wait until the moon got in the right position, and now I start thrusting and, well, I kind of mess it up, but thing a lot of people don't realize is that it's actually very easy to get a gravity assist. You just kind of sweep your uh, orbit vector across the, the moon's position until you get an e ejection that clearly comes off with higher velocity. Now, the game's not quite sure. It's, it's flickering back and forth. I think the solver's not quite sure what's happening. But you see that I did get a bit of a boost down into a lower orbit. It's not sufficient to get all the way there, so I... 
you know, follow through time acceleration. We uh, appreciate the planet Kerbin rising over the surface of the moon, but really we're just trying to get down to our periaps now so that we can complete our burn and get ourselves onto that all-important uh, trajectory that will cross the planets. And there we are, 9.6 million. Now, because we had to wait until after our lunar encounter, we actually ended up having to fire our engines at a higher altitude, which meant that we actually ended up using more fuel. We could not take advantage of the Oberth effect, and that was enough to offset the gain in the energy that the moon gave us. Now, if we go the other way, right, so we're doing the same thing, we're heading out to the planet uh, Duna, right? We're going to actually head out to Joule here, but I'm just doing a direct burn, and you see the numbers. A single burn takes 673.6. And then, of course, we just continue burning. And that brings us out eventually. We're bringing it out to 70 million meters or 70 million kilometers. It will take us almost 300 days to get there. And it seems to take an age to actually get these numbers to line up. And we're pretty close. But there we go. The burn to Joule Jewel takes me 1254.6. So now... And now we're going to do the Moonar Assist, uh, where I, and I'll explain what's actually going on here. You see, when you do a Moonar Gravity Assist, you basically have to fly off towards the Moon. Oh yeah, check out the awesome eclipse here. Uh, it's nice to see this in the game. It doesn't, of course, cast a shadow on the planet Kerbin, but uh, one day we can only hope. Anyway, the point is you are going to have to fly off in your orbit and swing past the Moon. Now, early on in, the, in your uh, trajectory, you're low down, you're close to the planet, you're burning your fuel uh, in, in deep inside the gravity well, and you're taking advantage of the Oberth effect. Now, um, that is good, but at some point, you uh, either you, one way you do it is you basically fly up to the moon and have the moon catch you and kick you out. And that means you're only ever burning enough fuel to get you to the moon. And then after that, you have to then do a second burn, but you're not going to be as um, far uh, deep inside the gravity well. Now, it is possible to fly past the moon at close to the exit velocity you need. But when you're traveling off to Joule, you actually end up flying past the moon at a very high speed. And while you can get a small kick from the moon, the amount of kick that you can get from uh, an assist, the amount of extra energy, basically goes down the faster you encounter it. And so if you're flying off into interplanetary space, you're traveling at well above escape velocity, and so you can't really take advantage of the moon or gravity assist. Um, that is that is there. It is a very small amount, but to, to get that you end up having to be very careful, align your planets and everything. And, you know, it's more effort than it's worth. The amount of reward does not, uh, is does not consistent with the amount of effort you have to put in. So here we have, we've done a straightforward fly past and we've got the kick into interplanetary space and then we've burned and yeah, it took more fuel. Um, hardly unexpected. Um, I remember when um, everyone was getting ready for KSP 0.16 or 0.17, somebody was like, oh, here's the best way, here's a mission plan, and they explained that they were going to get like kicked off into interplanetary space by the moon, getting their energy for free. There you go. The the dual one takes 500 more fuel units. It's way more. So yeah, if you do that, then it isn't for free, because you're having to carry all this extra fuel up the gravity well. Um, so don't do it. Really, don't bother with Moonar Assists. There's, it's a lot of effort for very little return. And indeed, if you do it in a naive fashion, you will probably be wasting fuel. Um, it's nice to see that people are thinking about these things, but you have to think about the entire chain of consequences when you uh, set up a, an orbit like this. And just because you get a kick for free from one thing doesn't mean that there, aren't, there isn't something you're giving up elsewhere. Anyway, thanks to Shujin Tribble for the question. Uh, if anyone else has some awesome ideas, please, uh, I'll be happy to answer them. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.